point is recording now. Right. So, <laughs> question, question five. The diagram shows a flow through a network of directed arcs. The amount that can flow in each arc is limited by its upper capacity. The lower capacity of each arc is zero. That's actually just a kind of throwaway comment, but that is quite important. Because um, if, if that hadn't been true, then this, you know, we're not given a, a diagram of the maximum flows, are we? We're just given this diagram here, which contains a, an initial flow. So if we weren't told that the capacity of each arc, the minimum capacity was zero, then, then this wouldn't tell us that. Do you know what I mean? That, that if there were kind of bigger minimum capacities, it would make it a much more difficult question. The labelled arrows shows, uh, the labelled arrows by the arc show how much more and how much less can flow in each arc in litres per second. And the objective is to find the maximum flow. How many litres per second are currently flowing along the route S, A, C, H, T? S, A, C, H, T. Okay, well we can see all the way along that route there is a backflow, potential backflow of three which means it can be reduced by three, and because the lower capacity of each arc is zero, that means there must be three flowing through that route. So, simple answer, just to say three for that first bit. How many litres per second are currently flowing from S to T? Well, in order to do that, all we need to look at is either how many litres are flowing out of S, or how many litres are flowing into T. It must be a consistent figure. We must get the same either way. We've got three flowing out along that one. That could reduce by two, so there's two flowing out along that one. And that one could reduce by three as well. So there's three flowing out through that one. And I make three plus two plus three equal eight. So we've got a total current flow of <coughs> 8. <coughs> what is the maximum by which the flow along the route S, B, G, I, T can be increased? Use the copy of the network on your answer booklet to show what would happen. So we're now, let's, um, let's update that one as well. We're now looking at the route S, B, G, I, T, S, B, G, to I, to T. That's the route we're interested in. And so we're now considering the other arrows. How much could we increase it by? So we could do 7 or 5, 8 and 7. We're limited by the, you know, the, the most restrictive arc along there. So it's 5 that we can get all the way through. We could get 7 that way, but we can only get 5 through that one. So it's, we can increase it by 5. So the first thing to say, the question did say by how much can it be increased. So we need to state it can be increased by 5. As our first answer to that. But then we need to illustrate that on the diagram. There it is that's given for us lower down the page. So that's the same diagram. All we're doing is updating the extra 5. So being really careful with this, we are going to do uh, that now changes to a 2, and that goes up to 8. This one goes down to 0, and we could reduce it by 5. Here we could reduce that by 5 and push 3 more through. And here we could push another 2, and that goes up to 8, because there's to show that there's 8 flowing through it. There we go. That is it uh, updated. The question then says, there's only two marks there, so one mark was for the five, the second mark was for updating those values. Find the maximum amount that can flow through the network. Explain by using a cut how you know that your flow is a maximum. Right. Um, <coughs> well, we're looking. Can we, can we increase by any more? And actually, I think it was quite kind, wasn't it, that they... I don't think you could, could you, having done that five? Um, if we're looking, let's look at some things here. As we go up this way, well, we can't go across there because that one 
I'm actually going to do that little thing where, um, will this work? Will you need to see this? If I, um, I'll use that color. So that one is at capacity. We can't push any more through that arc. Um, what other routes are there? Are there any others that are capacity? That one isn't. That one's at capacity. Can't push any more through there. This one is at capacity. That's at capacity. Any other arcs that are at capacity? This one appears to be. There's no more that can flow through that arc. Um, can anybody spot any others? This one? Can't flow any more through there. So we're looking, is there, is there any chance that we can come up with a route that bypasses those Um, and gets to T. I mean, that, that looks promising there, doesn't it, along there? But then we, we're stuck, we can't get in that way. Um, you can't get into T at all that way. The only way could be if you could get some into that one arc, into that one there. But you'd have to do that by, that one's at capacity, that one. You can't get into that one because that's at capacity. We're, we're done, aren't we? We're stuck. We can't get any more through. So, the question did say, what is the, uh, the maximum flow through the network? And we've identified it. The maximum flow is 13. Now, we need to come up with a cut. Now, remember the thing about cuts is that a cut um, is only, it, it, a cut is all about um, flows, uh, all about capacities, not flows. So we've got to make sure that we're using the capacities of the arcs when we're dealing with our cut. Is there do you remember the trick for this is looking, is there a cut that goes only through arcs that are at capacity, arcs that are saturated? So trying to think, well it looks like, remember we've got to separate um, S and T, it looks like if we go like that, and that looks promising, doesn't it? Because if you look at the arcs that we've gone, that's going from source, this one is going from source to sink. That one is going from source to sink. That's going from source side to sink side. That arc there is going from sink to source. And we don't count it if it's going the wrong way across a cut, if its minimum capacity is zero. And that one is going from source to sink. So that looks like a very promising cut. So we need to describe that cut <coughs> correctly. And that cut has separated what we've got on this side of it, S, A, B, C, D, E1, and F. So that cut is S, A, B, C, D, E1, F. The other side of the cut has E2, oh it's got H on there as well, sorry, H. The other side of the cut has E2, G, I and T. And is that right? Have I written that right? Yes. There is my cut, separating those off. Uh, the value of the cut, Remember, we have to express the value in terms of capacities of arcs, not in terms of flows. But because I've picked saturated arcs, it is the, the capacity is the flow. They are flowing at capacity. So that one is 5. That one is 3. That one is 2. That one is 3, but it's the wrong direction. I wrote it down as being a plus zero, but it really we didn't need to write it at all. Plus three, um, and so we've got a total of 13. And because that total of the cut is the same as the maximum flow that we'd found, <coughs> the mi maximum, what do we say, the minimum cut equals the maximum flow. 
and that proves that our flow is at the level that we want. We just needed some way of uh, referring to that at the end. There we go. Um, are we happy with that? We tended to have this cut not quite described correctly, and so most people had, had either not made a distinction between E1 and E2, or just placed the cut in the wrong place. Um, I think that is the only valid cut. I think that's the only cut that we've drawn there. It's the only one that gives you a value of 13. Okay. Um, right. Now, the, the next bit... The network has vertices S, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and T. The single vertex is replaced by a pair of vertices E1 and E2 together with the arc E1, E2. What does the arc joining E1 and E2 tell you about the flow at E? Okay, well, I guess this is just something that we need to know. We've done this, we've had examples of this before, where uh, the way, it, it's very easy if you have a restriction on a, on an arc and a pipe on your flow diagrams because you you know you state what that restriction is. It gets more difficult if we've got a restriction at a vertex. If there's something about the joining of two pipes that means that flow is restricted through them. You can't kind of put that into the diagram. So the way around it is to create a dummy arc across that vertex that illustrates the restriction. So between E1 and E2, we had a maximum possible flow of 2. That was the figure that was in there. So all that it tells us, the answer to part 5, is that there was a flow restriction at E of 2 units, or, or however it was described, 2 litres per second. So the answer to part 5 was a vertex restriction. limit to the flow of 2. Now how you describe that is quite important because it's not enough to say that there is a flow of 2 through E or um, yeah, you have to say or a flow of 2 at E or a flow of 2 along E1, E2 you actually have to get across the idea that it's, you've got a restriction there. So you needed to say uh, at most 2 litres. Some way of describing that 2 was the maximum that could go through. And it was through E. And it was important to, to describe the fact that it was 2 litres passing through vertex E that was the restriction. Then they asked you to update the diagram to kind of go back, complete the diagram in your answer book so to show how the flow resulting after part three um, on a directed network with the original vertices. So get rid of this flow restriction and update the diagram. Um, now, looking at what we've got then, so E1 and E2 have merged. Notice we had arcs from D to E1 and F to E1. So that they are, that is flows from D to E and from F to E. So we need to have I actually, the, on the mark scheme, they drew it slightly offset, but I drew it right in the middle here and had these arcs going in there and marking those arcs on. And that's what my new diagram looked like. And then it's a case of, uh, of comparing that with your flow from earlier on and updating all the figures. So we had... 3 going from S to A. We had 3 going on that one. That one was at 0. Let's pick out a couple of others. S, S to E. We have a flow of 2 along there. Um, D to E. D to E we have 0 going on that one. And the same F to E, we have zero going on that one. So they are both zeros. Um, we've got lots more zeros. That was zero, that one was zero. 
We ended up with eight on there because we'd actually had a couple of flows going through it. So that the back arrow there shows eight. <coughs> we have three flowing on that way, so there must be five flowing across the bottom. And now it's just a case of uh, filling in the gaps often with them, um, with using, you know, the, the conservation rule and all of that kind of thing. So three goes into C, so three must come out of C. We have zero going on that one. We've got three going into H then, so there's to be three coming out. We've got, um, well, we have two going into E. So we must have two out. We've got three going into F and zero going up that way, so that must be three there as well. This must be five, and that makes eight going into I, so eight coming out. And that's, um, that's all of them done, isn't it? You've got to be thorough and make sure you've labelled every single arc for the two marks. There we go. And that's maths.